Hi, Travis with Splunk here. In this video, I want to cover how to enable and use your search results or search job metadata as tokens within Dashboard Studio Builder. Here I've got a dashboard I call Playground that I use to help me test out new settings or features, or if somebody asks me, hey, how can you do this? I'll come in here and play. I've got a simple pie chart here that is showing all of the countries that I'm allowing or blocking into my home network. I use a command called IP location to translate that source IP address into a country name. And I'll go and show the documentation around that if you want to learn more about it. But once you click on something in this pie chart, I've set up tokens already to be able to pass information like the country name, or the click name and value. And then I'm using a couple of the uh, metadata tokens to show you that you can set up maybe the last time this search was updated. And there's a bunch more that you can use. So let's get into uh, the documentation and show you how to get there. What I like to do is go out to your favorite search browser engine and just look up Splunk Dashboard Studio Metadata. And you can put Splunk documentation in there. However, you can see that the first link is to our docs.splunk.com. And once you click on that link, I've already got it pulled up. You can see the documentation that we have around, you know, setting tokens for search results or search job metadata. Now there's a lot of good information in here how to set the token, how to you know, enable this feature, what options do you have? And as, as of this recording, I am using the latest release Splunk Enterprise 9.1. When I compared this to 9.0.5, there's four new options that became available. One was, uh, is, you know, job is real-time search. Another one was job last updated job percent complete in the job search ID. This could be inf helpful information, you know, inside of you're building your own dashboard. So you can come down here and see more examples, how to use it and whatnot. I'm going to go back into you know, my Splunk environment. Oh, before I do that, let's go. Uh, I did mention IP location. I have that pulled up already. So do another simple search, Splunk documentation, IP location command, and you should find a link to this page here. And I'll make sure to have all the links included in my description on this video. But anyway, here is the command I use to translate that, that IP address to other fields that include stuff like city, country, region, Latin, lawn, latitude and longitude. This could be all good information to help you, you know, build useful dashboard. Go through here, read about the command. This is a, a database that's included inside of Splunk, a third party database. And you can see right here, the name of it, how to update it, how to use it. And then if you ever need to use this in a air gap network, secured, don't have internet. I have done that before, so this can be used offline. Now let's jump over to a search here. And this is what's powering that pie chart that I was showing off earlier, where I just have my you know, index equals open sense, where all my firewall data is, a source type for the filter log, the firewall data. The direction, I could change that from inbound to outbound. I could add action in here if it was allowed or blocked. I don't have that here. Um, but then there is that IP location and I tell it which field to use that has the IP address. And then it creates a bunch of other fields and I'm only using uh, you know, the country field. This is how I created the pie chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new dashboard from this. So I'll click save as new dashboard and we'll just say all, or we'll just say inbound firewall 
traffic. We'll make sure to select Dashboard Studio. You could give it a description if you would like. And I'm going to use the absolute layout control. If I needed to, you know, I could put a, a title in here, you know, all traffic. This is inbound. You can say inbound. There go. Leave it as pie chart. Um, there is advanced stuff that we could do. You know, if I really wanted to start working on the drill downs here, but I'm not. And I'm going to click save to dashboard. And we're going to view that dashboard. And now we have a very, you know, the, the very beginning of that simple dashboard I built in Playground. I'm going to go up here and go ahead and click edit. We're going to resize this. Hopefully this is, you know, if I need to, hopefully this is coming up in the, I'm still working on, you know, I'm new to, say I'm new, I've been doing it for a little bit now, but I'm still learning how to record videos that can be easily viewed and even working on my microphone and adjustments in OBS studio to make sure I'm, I'm not hearing myself breathe anymore when I record a video. Anyway, here we've got the pie chart. I go in here where it's got the uh, data overview, pancakes, whatever you want to call it. I can come in here and see it I already created my one search. If I wanted to, I could rename this search to something a little bit more simple. Yeah. And I'm going to do that because I don't feel like typing that out every time, but I'm going to leave it right there and apply and close. While I was in there, I should have, because I want to enable all of that metadata token usage and whatnot. But I'm going to go back in here and edit that search again and click the box that says access search results or metadata. And then I'll click apply and close. So now I will have access to that different information to create those tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and create a markdown box just to show you me passing that information over. We're, we'll start out with something like um, job status. So if I go back to my documentation, I'm going to close that one out. And we can come up here and look at the different things that are available. We can see here job status indicates the status of the job. It returns done, queued, or in progress. And, and this is good if you've got hidden panels and you're wanting to give people the, the warm and fuzzy that the job is working. Let's go back to that new dashboard and I'm going to copy this over here. I already had it saved in a, a notepad. Now where it says search name here, you will need to replace that with what the search title was. I believe it was all inbound traffic. I'm going to go ahead and click out of it, click out of it here. And I was correct. And if you need to, let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, we can, I can easily do that by, cause I don't know how well the text is coming up, but if I come over here and click header, it will make it a little bit bigger. Uh, you can actually, you see how it gave me three pounds there. So I'm gonna take two of them out. See if it makes it any bigger. There we go. A little bit bigger. Um, that's some of the cool things that you can do with the markdown is, you know, little adjustments like that to change the styling in here. But here we can see the job status for this dashboard panel. You know, it's done. If I wanted to, I can, you know, put it over here. Uh, I actually could have put it in there. So if I would have copied, you know, this part here. You know, the, the job status colon, you know, colon is me making it look pretty. The, the token is actually that piece where I could have put it right here. I'm down. Yep. Let's click off there and I could have it say done right there. Uh, other things that we could do, you know, maybe we want to put in, um, yeah, percentage as it's running. 
mean, that would be, you know, I've done that before in another dashboard. Come down here and say that. I'm going to copy the title, which if you don't remember what your title is, I'm gonna go ahead and copy, and then I'm gonna click out of it. You can see it says 100%. Uh, if you don't remember what the title was, you can easily come back to uh, your data overview where the pancakes are, and it's right here. That's the that's what I'm using for the search name when you are looking at the uh, documentation where it says search name. Just replace that part with the title. Um, other things that we could do, and you know, job message, last updated, you know, in progress. So there's a lot of different things that we can, you know, we can play with here. Like here, I can put in the, this information. Let's see here, bam, copy this out of here, and just place it right here. And see if we can you know we can keep adding as much or as little information as we would like don't like how small that is make it bold we can make it as a header i'm gonna take out the bold there i mean we can once again make it the same size as the other and then if you wanted to pass like i'm you know i was passing a country name over here you know, I would click back in here and I never did have to come in here using the, the search job results or the metadata. I never did have to come in here and actually add an interaction or a drill down. I mean, once I went into data overview then clicked and edited that search and selected access search results, that enabled it for me. So, but if I needed that you know, that country name, if I wanted to pass that over, you know, I can easily do that by adding that interaction. Let's say set token. And in here I can put in country. And then we are gonna say row and field name value. Then make sure you replace the greater and lesser with country. I am using that here apply and now i could let's go back into that title say looking at dollar sign country dollar sign and then select out of it we're going to hit save and once i view this And you know, I viewed it, refreshed it, and I realized I didn't click on anything yet, and that's why it wasn't populating. <laughs> but here it is. You can see, you know, job status is in progress. It's at 100% now. We saw the percentage, and we can see the search ID that was running when I, you know, ran this search. You know, if I come up here and say, let's say, last four hours. Oh, did I not? Hmm. I must have. Let me click edit here. Let's go into the search and look at the data sources. I forgot to, yeah, go time range, global time, apply, save, view. Now, once I start changing, um, yeah, the time, <laughs> I forgot to uh, set that. So there's a, a lesson, even though you know, I created this from a search. It did not actually link my search to my time range picker. Uh, last thing, you know, if you do want, you know, other, so if we want to go in here and we want to know the, you know, last time this was updated, put it in a markdown value you can easily just copy, you know, this piece here, um, go into this search. I can create another one here and say, you know, move this one down here, you know, maybe, maybe move this over here. You know, if I wanted that information there and then come in here, paste that, let's grab this because I just find it easier to copy and paste. Then maybe it's page, 
last updated. Bam, I can make this a little bit bigger. Let's give that that. And bam, save, view. Now we can say, hey, page was last updated. Oh, I must have click edit. There we go. Now it should work. It, so that was, uh, if you didn't see that or I did it too fast, um, what happened, I accidentally took out all the spaces between the pound and page. So it did actually use the pound. It thought it was part of the, the word page. So I had to go back in there. In this case, if you do the same thing, but you can do that. Uh, this is in Zulu time. I haven't played with it enough. I'm in central time. So now I've already had to do the, the math here to take the six, seven, whatever it is, hours off of that to be my time. I still need to play around with that, but you get an idea of when it was last updated. If you have any other questions, please put it in the comments. I hope you find this uh, video helpful and happy spelunking.